Hi everyone, it's Ross here, and on the hobby desk today, it's the Mage Wrath Throne. So it's a small terrain piece, or smallish terrain piece for AOS, that's Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Um, or I've been asked to paint it up for the club, I don't see why not. Um, now normally I like to look at the artwork and I would do the artwork or be inspired by the artwork and do something semi-similar. Um, but with this artwork, I'm not entirely sure I'm happy about the, the dragons, so I'll get a little bit closer. Try to get rid of the shine. So, the stone works alright, but I'm not sure about the dragons. So, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do to paint them up yet. We'll have a little looky in the bag. A little note about suffocation on the bag, so I'll try not to put it over my head. Okay, so not too many pieces. Not too many pieces. And I've noticed no destructions, which is wonderful. But how hard could it possibly be, right? I shouldn't have said that, should I? Right, so I can see that that's the back of the throne. Um, and I can make the throne up. With the dragons either side. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. So I will assemble this. And then I'll talk about how I'm going to paint it. And then start, guess what, painting it. Yay! Okay, so I've assembled it in four main pieces. I've got this piece here, the main stairs, the base. Uh, haven't assembled it because it's already one piece. That would be cheating for me to say that. But I have assembled the throne. So the throne will go on there. But first, I want to paint the base. So I'm not going to put that in. I need to get rid of any mould lines, and I'm seeing the back of the skulls here. There's quite a lip, so I'm going to use a bit of liquid green stuff to get rid of that. And same on each of the dragon pieces. I want to paint the base up before I stick these on the sides. And there is a bit of a mould line on the back, just in there if I can get the light right. So I'm going to bust out some liquid green stuff, which I don't think I've used before on this channel. So liquid green stuff by Citadel. Like regular green stuff, but slightly liquidy. Funny of that. So I will get a odour paintbrush. Get it a bit wet. And I will start working some of this liquid green stuff about. So, it's not literally a liquid. It, it is slightly thicker. So, if I can shine a light in there. I'll tone it down a little bit for you guys. How is that? So, in there you can see that it is not a liquid. You can make it a liquid with a bit of water, just like that. See, just like that. It's an old brush. I'll take a little bit of this. And on the throne itself, I'm going to get a little bit behind the skull. Just like so. Making the step less obvious. So this stuff will shrink a little bit over time. And it's pretty nice to work with. So put it on like that. You can wait until it fully goes off and then you can sand it. Or you can try blending it in with your finger right now. Depends how confident you are on it. Now you don't have to get rid of this lip. I just think it's a little bit on the excessive side. So I get a little bit more moisture. I was off camera, sorry guys. So just working it around there, working it behind the skull. Now, and imagine these are actually part of a stone section of the throne, not actually giant skulls, because 
that would be phenomenal, you know. I suppose it could be ogre skulls, but they're too pretty for that. So just a little bit around there as well. And once it dries, like I said, it shrinks a little bit. You can always add a bit more. And if you do have too much, you can always sand it back. Just a bit of wet and dry or something. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to fill in around the skulls a little bit. Wiping off any excess. Now this stuff also, liquid green stuff, is also good for cloaks and things like that. Because what I like to do is thin it down a little bit with some water, put it on a cloak, and once it dries, it gives a little bit of texture to it. So it makes like a cloak more hessian looking if you wanted it to if it's like a undead model or something probably wouldn't have the fanciest robes just a experiment with it I'm using it to get rid of some fine lines here just to show you what I can do with it once that fully dries that would be fine to paint and the same thing with these guys, so getting a little bit more liquid green stuff. I'm going to get it in the crack in the back there. So when the two pieces mold together, even with a little bit of plastic glue, which is always nice to mold two halves a piece together, still got a little bit of something there. You can still see a bit of a mold line. So I want to get rid of as much of that as possible, make it nice and nice and smooth. Now I know this is only a statue, it's not going to be like a living creature or anything, so you can make out that it is a bit rocky, a bit stony, a bit rough around the edges, it could be hundreds of years old, but I want these to be looking a little bit smoother than that. So adding a little bit of green stuff there, a bit around there. Any mold lines I think is excessive, this is no brush and I'm just mashing it about like that, wiping off the excess and doing the same with the other dragon as well. Right, once I've done all the mold lines, uh, anything that I feel that the green stuff sh should be any cracks, any divots or anything, I'm going to wait till it fully goes off before I start painting it. So I'll finish up that now. Okay, so what I'm basically going to do is two main colours on this piece of terrain. Now I was quite tempted to paint it marble, uh, I've done a marble effect before with a dry wipe which is great, uh, but this is quite bumpy so I'm not entirely sure how putting the dry wipe down will actually work. So what I've decided to go was, with a bit of this from Citadel, and then using the airbrush, doing the highlights with this. Um, it's just, I didn't want the colours to be too garish, too bright. Um, I wanted it to be a bit a bit muted, a bit khaki kind of coloured. Uh, in the past I've done AOS terrain like a sandy colour. Um, and I thought I'll try something a bit different. So that's my colours I'm going to go with. Um, and then I'm going to put some detail over the top on the actual throne itself. Now remember the, the box art is totally different. I didn't like the red at all. Um, so that's the kind of colour I'm going to do for the probably the, the base. And then I'm going to go with the statues and the main part of the throne and pick up some detail pieces on the skulls and things like that. So that's what I'm going to go with. We'll see what it looks like. So, because this is an airbrush paint, I am using a little bit of airbrush thinner to thin it down. So, airbrush thinner in the pot. Mix it about with a paintbrush. And always test it on something first. 
nice and gentle. Okay, so. Getting all the little nooks and crannies, all the cracks in the stone. I'm getting all those bits first. The airbrush is clipping in there, nice and loud. Basically, I thought these colours were quite interesting. I'm not entirely sure how the gold is going to work with them, but I just wanted the uh, a bit different on the table because this is a throne. Uh, I'm horse thinking maybe do the whole thing gold and stone. Uh, just like the sandy stone I had previously, the gold probably wouldn't stand out that much. But we'll see. Alright, so I'm going to cover this thing. This plinth, I guess you would call it, with this GW green. Okay, be back in a minute. So once the green stuff is drying, the liquid green stuff in the backs of these dragons, I covered it all with a GW green. So the green I used was, you can use any green you want, you can use any paint you want, the old catch and green. So watered it down a little bit with a bit of airbrush thinner, good old airbrush thinner, so I'm using the Vallejo product, you can use whatever you like, I'm not that I'm sponsored by Vallejo, it's just what I have, what I use, and nice even coverage, a couple coats of that on there. So what I'm experimenting now with, because I'm not using the box art for once, I'm going a bit different, so I've covered this then I've used a nice dark green wash to get in all the recesses and then I'm hitting the larger areas again with the same colour. So it's still a little bit wet, you can still see there's a bit of a sheen to it. And then hitting any raised areas with the old airbrush. So ripping through it pretty fast, as is my normal style with a bit of terrain. This is still very much wet in the centre there, but covering the whole thing here. So what I'm thinking is um, a dark green, just like an aged, almost slaty kind of look to it. I don't want to use any greys, you know, as proper slate. Uh, and I know it's quite a white stone on the box art. I didn't want to use that. So uh, once these are fully dry, I'm going to hit it with the same dark green wash there. And this is where these guys are going to go eventually. So they're going to look pretty much the same. I'm going to pick out the skull as a bit of detail and then I'm going to dry brush everything there once it's stuck down. But this is where all the detail is at, so when that sticks down there. It's a bit weird because I imagine it kind of like an abandoned throne because uh, it's in the middle of a battlefield. Uh, I don't know why there'd be like a quilty, velvety kind of looking seat to there. Um, but I'm going to make it, rather than bright red like I normally do with that kind of thing, I'm going to make it, that's what it used to look like, but now it's all dried and dusty and heavily worn. So that's what I'm going to go with initially, and then I'm going to start beating it up a little bit. Dry brushing some lighter colours in there, and some dirty colours. Um, and then I'm going to pick up all the skulls, weather them up nicely, and then start picking up some detail on the dragons and things. So I could have gone with the old marble look. Um, you know, I could have gone with maybe a bronze look on the dragons, possibly. Um, still might do that. I am literally just going with what is in my head at the time. So it, it's looking pretty cool. I do like the piece. Um, I could have painted up like the rest of my AOS stuff. So that's more like a sandy colour. But I wanted this to be more of a feature. And the rest of the AOS stuff looks very much like Sigmar. This looks more possibly undead quartz or maybe even corn because of the skulls and things like that. So it wouldn't fit in with the rest. But rather than going red, or maybe like undead, kind of like flesh looking, um, I want it to be a bit different. I want to stick out a bit. It's just a real fun piece, and you can use any colours you want. I didn't want to be too garish though. So, I'm going to it dries, and hit some recesses with a darker wash. 
So it's all starting to dry quite nicely. Now this is the colour I am using. To get in all the recesses, I'll paint the whole model. Work it nicely into all the crevices. So it's giving it a shade all over because I'm going to get the airbrush on it in a bit and just do the areas like you know, center of the wings, things like that. Pick out some high spots, like get some definition on that muscle all ready for dry brushing later on. Now the reason I'm using dry brushing normally gives it a bit of a texture. It's not fantastic for set models like Space Marines, anything with big flat armor, it looks a bit rough. But anything with a lot of detail is fantastic for them. Now the reason I do it a lot on terrain is terrain has a lot of texture. Unless this is like high polished marble or something, it's going to be a bit roughy. So I'm going to get a bit of texture on it in the form of a dry brush. So it looks a bit more like stone as well. Little recesses there, little gaps between the wings. You get the idea. So, like the base, do the same with these two dragons and the throne. So, just cover it in this stuff. Where it pulls too much, pick up the excess and just move it on a little bit somewhere else. Like that. Now, keep going and do the other pieces. And then when it's dry, I'll carry on with the airbrush. Once your dark wash is dry, and I like to use a little bit of this from Games Workshop. So it's a very dark green, gives it um, a bit more of a jade kind of look. I didn't want a black wash in the recess. Um, because then it'll look a little bit too cartoony when everything's a bit highlighted too strongly. Now I've started dry brushing with a good old makeup brush, some of the details, so a bit of the dragon wings, things like that, and any cracks. So you've got the, the contrast between the, the regular green, the dry brush, and then you've got the dark green there in the recess. And I'm using a little bit of the old Death Guard green. So get a little bit on your makeup brush or whatever brush you would like to use. A uh, nice wide brush is totally fine. And dry it out a little bit, you know, work it a few times on maybe a paper towel, something like that, to dry it out. So I'm gonna start really hitting this. You know, less is more initially. You can always add more and more and more. And it's giving it a bit more of a, like a stony kind of feel to it instead of a solid color. I imagine this thing is pretty old. No one's gonna be blowing the dust off of it. Really getting some detail there. You can see the the lines really start popping now from the recess. So not too much. So you see how dry my brush is. It is literally just the bare minimum from there. So I'm going to start really picking up some detail there. I'm working it like that. So you can see now really the, the contrast between the colors really start popping through. So it's a bit brighter than I first initially thought, which is great. I don't want it too, too dark. And just keep working it, keep working it. Picking out all the detail. The dragon wings in there. In there. Now I'll do the whole lot. And I'll start picking out the skulls. So I'm not sure how a maybe a bronzy color will work on this, uh, but that's the kind of color I want to go with, almost like a coppery color. And then I imagine a little bit of this stuff, some oxide just running off the rivets and things like that. If anything brass, I may paint in the future. 
But it's the skulls next, and I'm not going to go too, too white with the skulls. I want them old, weathered, cracked, not bleach bone. So I'm going to carry on with this. Pick out all the detail I can. And once it's dry, I'll start attacking the bones. Okay, how I do quick and easy dirty skulls. So skulls that aren't polished or anything. I start with a bit of skull white. And you know the, these are literally quick and dirty, like I'm saying. But skull white on your brush. And I'm just picking up the raised areas mainly. Even the the deep dark recesses like this. Try not to drown the detail. The idea is, once it's covered, leaving the sockets mainly untouched, is to go over it with some of this, some sepia, makes the skulls slightly yellowy, aged, been there for a while, <laughs> like if you put them on teeth it would look like it's got gingivitis or something. And once it's all dry, you can then pick up any detail you wish with a little bit of the old bleach bone. So this is the quick and easy way of doing it, I mean if it was on a miniature and I was doing it for Golden Demon, I would spend ages trying to blend the colours of the skull. But with this, I'm literally just putting down basic white, followed by a, a wash, and pick up any detail afterwards. So this should make the skulls look dirty, like they've been there for ages, not freshly plucked out of a victim. And you might need to go over twice to thinnish coats of the white because you don't want to get any loss of detail. Detail on these skulls aren't fantastic anyway, They're not massively realistic on this particular piece. Don't know how old this piece of terrain is, I haven't seen it before. Certainly haven't seen it on any tables, any clubs that have gone around. That's basically it, just keep picking out all the skulls, do all the skulls with the white, and then possibly a second coat with the white on all the skulls. So we have the uh, sepia next. Get a bit of that on there. Make sure the white's perfectly dry or it's just going to make a milky mess. <laughs> no one wants a milky mess. So put quite a bit of this stuff on. So it finds all the recesses. And like I said, there are tidier ways of painting skulls. But this is an ancient throne that's been in the middle of a battlefield for years or in the middle of a tomb. Not going to be clean skulls. Plenty on there. The usual mopping up any excess, transferring it somewhere else. There's a little bit extra there, putting that somewhere else.
you get the idea. So I will repeat with every single skull. Back in a bit. Okay, so once dry, you should get this kind of effect. So, you know, it's, it's not bad. But if you want to pick up any detail, I'm going to say a little bit of the bleach bone will pick that up. So any bits of cheek or anything, cheekbone, bit of forehead. For me, I want to leave it that kind of colour for now and see what it looks like when the copper is done. So for the copper, funny enough, I actually don't like using tin blitz maybe, uh, it's possibly too dark. I think what I'll do is I will start with gold, so retribute your armour, and then I will probably use like a brown wash put over the top of it and work my way back from there. So giving it a little bit of a shake. Get your brush. As per always, thin it to a point. Now I've already pre-thinned this paint pot a bit thinner as anyway. But you can always use a little bit of water and mix it on your tile. So here's going for a bit of detail. Just like that. Work my way around. Uh, this gold actually covers quite well. Some gold you might find you you definitely have to do two coats. Uh, with this stuff, maybe not. It covers really, really well, even though I thinned it out a little bit. So initially, I was going to stick with the old corn red because I do love a bit of the coinate colours, and that looks lovely with gold. I wasn't entirely sure about this green, but it's not looking too bad. I quite like it. slightly better in the picture for you guys. Going off camera a little bit there. It shows up quite nicely. It's a bit of a contrast with the dark-ish green. Really bright goldy colour. I may only pin wash the rivet with the gold now because I'm quite enjoying it. But I will cover all the goads, so that centerpiece there, centerpiece there, there's a couple of little swiggly bits maybe, maybe the arches, I think that will break it up a little bit there. Some on the other side. And maybe even the skull on the base, see what it looks like. I mean at the moment it's looking pretty nice, you can see I've stuck the dragons on each side. There's a bit too much green, so I'm going to get some detail and at least put three main colours on this piece so it doesn't look too, too much like the one colour. I normally go rule of three, three basic colours on a piece, and it's quite eye catching. Much more than that, it gets a bit too complicated, doesn't draw anybody's eye from the other side of the room. Um, yeah, and, and too plain, if it's just one colour, it looks a bit bland. So, happy kind of medium. I'm thinking about three colours. So, I'm going to start picking up some detail. We'll be back when it's all done. Right. Once all the detail has been picked out by the gold, I like to run a little bit of the old Agrax Earthshade on gold. Now, Caribou Crimson can look quite nice with gold. It's not a problem. Do quite like that. But I'm just going to put some recesses here. And any bolts or little divots like that. Just go around the outside there. Just almost framing and highlighting the gold itself. Do 
just like that. So all the little rivets on the top of the seat. And on the actual recesses of the seat as well. I don't want to make it look too clean. Just working it in there on all of them. Like so. Just the darker side there. Making the gold look a bit more antique. Now if this is actually true gold, it won't have an oxide on. But if you want to make it look more bronze and tone it down a lot, then bronze and brass you probably would get an oxide on. Alright, just calming it down just a fraction. And on the rear, same thing. Any rivets, any divots. Any recesses, just like so. Also on the lower side, underneath as well, for a bit of shading. The same on the base. Now there is a gold frame on the base itself, so I'll do it on that little chips and on the recess sections. So it's taking a knocking over the ears. Like so, and darken it up as much as you like. So I'm actually going to leave it a bit bright. Actually, I've changed my mind once again um, because I do like the contrast between the dark green and the gold. After all, and I'm thinking possibly the oxide might be too much of a greeny tinge to the whole thing. I change my mind on a regular basis when I don't follow the artwork. Box artwork, kind of go with it and see how I like it as it develops. Okay, maybe a bit there as well. dry and I will glue it all together and see what I think. Okay so it's pretty much done I mean you can keep pick out details making it brighter and cleaner um, you know more eye-catching I was half tempted to paint the the wings up here a bright red to make it a bit more of a focal point um, but then I decided with the, the seat of the chair um, being probably a tad too bright anyway, and I had to weather it to make it look a bit dirtier, a bit more worn. Um, probably bright red would probably be too eye-catching, for what I per personally want. Uh, so what I've done is, I've painted one brick slightly different colour, and I've put a tiny little tuft of grass poking 
out through the cracks in the bricks there, just as a little bit of detail. Um, if this was my own uh, piece of terrain and it wasn't bought for the club and I was decided to paint it up, what I possibly would do was make a few candles, maybe put on the steps and do a little bit of object source lighting from there. So you would have a dark, gloomy piece with a bright light there, a bit more eye catching. So the piece of terrain wouldn't be eye catching itself, just the light on it. Uh, and same thing, I, I thought maybe put light or object source lighting in the eyes of the skull, make it look a bit more eye catching rather than the, the piece is clean and bright itself. But no, I'm reasonably happy with it. Uh, it's quite a simple piece to assemble and uh, not bad for detail. There's a couple of skulls that look a bit iffy, you know, a bit like the 90, um, 1990s GW skulls, like on the belts and things like that, they're always a little bit off, you know. But no, really nice piece. A look good on the, the table at the local club. Please hit the like button, guys, and thank you very much for watching. Catch you next time.